All right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. This is Anthony Smoke. Check me out on anthonysmoke.com. Definitely subscribe to me here uh, on YouTube. Today, we're in Power BI. And I want to talk to you a little bit about time series forecasting in Power BI. I got a very simple data set that I downloaded from forecasters.org. And as you can see, it's simply date and sales. We'll go take a look at the data. I've got a date here and sales is my measure. Very, very simple. And all I did to get started here, this is a, this is a line chart right in power bi you bring that in i pulled in my date which is at the month grain if we take a look i'm not using any hierarchy information i'm just pulling the date and i drag sales into values a little bit of formatting and uh, you know voila here you are and so let's take a look at how we would get a forecast uh, based upon this data i'm going to select the line chart and you'll see this uh, analytics uh, pane shows up here i'm going to click on that and if your visualization is eligible for a forecast, the forecast option will show up. I believe you need at least seven data points uh, in order to um, have the algorithm generate a forecast for you. So we're going to click Add here. And I'm going to change this uh, just really quick, change this to white, make that easier to look at. And you'll see I've got a forecast length based upon some number of points. So I know that uh, my data is at a month grain. They're 12 months in a year. I want to forecast a year. So we're going to go 12 points, right? And I could, let's say um, I had 365 points at the daily level, right? My points would be 365 in order to get that year, right? I'm going to ignore the second option here. And you'll see I have this confidence interval at uh, 95%. Basically what that's saying is the algorithm is telling me that there is a 95% chance that my prediction predicted uh, forecast is going to fall within uh, this uh, this range here this uh, this gray range and if I change this to 99 right and not hit apply it widens if I change it to 75 and I hit apply it narrows so we're gonna keep it at the default 95% uh, uh, confidence uh, interval and you'll notice that, hey, I have this uh, flat line here, not a very useful uh, forecast. That's because I haven't baked in seasonality. And so seasonality is just, um, I need to enter in how many cycles of data I'm looking at. So I know that um, I'm looking at a year at the month level. So my seasonality is going to be 12 points, right? one for uh, each month of the year hit apply and you'll notice a, a useful and interesting uh, forecast uh, emerges here once I hit apply um, just looking at this forecast real quick you'll see I've got a spike here um, in May of 2019 because it looks like in my data I've got spikes uh, in May maybe not so much in 2018 but going back to May 2017 you'll see I've got a spike uh, May 2016, I've got a spike. And in May 2015, I got a spike. So the algorithm is saying, hey, in May 2019, uh, you're probably going to have a little spike uh, as well. So let me, um, here, and we didn't play around with this. Uh, you know, with my line style, I could change it to, to dashed. Uh, I can change it to dotted if I wanted to. Uh, the confidence band style, we can have it just a line. If I wanted that look visually, or I could say none, just show me my... Uh, Show me my forecast. So we're going to change it back. Let's keep the default. I like the fill. Um, ignore last. So the concept of hind casting, right? It's a way for me to double check to see if the forecast trend matches real data. So I could tell um, the algorithm to skip the last six months, like exclude six months of actuals from the forecast and make a prediction from there, right? So if I do that, and I still want a year's worth of, uh, I still want it to go out uh, to the end of May 2019. So I'm going to increase this uh, to 18 here, hit apply. And you'll notice I have an actual versus a forecast plot. I can look to see if the trends are uh, somewhat similar. I see I had something here, actuals that went off the beaten path a little bit. Um, 
and so the forecast uh, uh, thought we were going to be up here. I'm still within the uh, the confidence interval though, and you can see it narrows as as we get uh, as we as we move further out. But but this is very handy in that I can just look and see, hey, what is the forecast giving me? Uh, what what actually happens? So you can make that judgment call whether the forecast uh, is going to work for you or not. So that's the that's the concept of hind casting. Just remember the hind cast is not necessarily going to uh, mirror the predictions with all the data based upon the larger data set because the data is different and the further I go back in hind casting the less information I have the less it's going to represent my current uh, forecast so uh, one of the things I don't like right let's let's beat this up before we build it up here one of the things I don't like is that I can't go in here I can't right click and export my forecast at upper and lower bounds into Excel and take a look at that data right there's no way to do that obviously I can get my actuals but I can't get that forecast so that's that's strike one I don't like strike two um, the fact that this is sort of a black box you don't know what Power BI is doing to come up with this uh, this forecast. So based upon PowerView, I found some literature that talks about what PowerView does, another Excel product. It uses exponential smoothing, and in case you're not a stat head, I'm not a stat head either, but at, at a high level, uh, your, your exponential smoothing, it's just a, a forecast algorithm that looks for patterns uh, in your in your data and extrapolates that that pattern out using some sort of weighted uh, averages of past values so one of the things that goes into exponential smoothing is a smoothing factor and that's pretty much a judgment call based upon the uh, you know the algorithm or the statistician but we don't know what power bi is using as its smoothing factor we don't know anything it's a black box it's just here take it so that's that's strike two that's one thing i don't like uh, about the uh, the time series forecasting but what i do like uh, to give you the pros the hind casting as compared to tableau uh, when i hind cast i get this um, my actual versus my prediction in the visualization you don't get that in tableau right out of the box uh, another thing you get that upper bound and lower bound in the tooltip as you can see here you don't get that in tableau right out of the box so that's that's one of the uh, or that's two of the things that I like in Power BI with respect to Tableau uh, in time series uh, forecasting. So uh, this has been uh, Anthony Smoke. Hope you found this useful time series forecasting in Power BI. Take this tip, get out there and do some great things with your data. Thanks for watching, everyone.